I didn't pick politics, politics picked me. Uh, I was raised by a single mom in a house like so many across the world that struggles to cover the basics like food and rent, right? And when I was 15, I ended up moving out. And I experienced what one in 30 teens in the U.S. do, and that's called hidden homelessness, which means not having a home of my own. And it was from that position, sitting in my sex education classroom in Arizona, being taught a curriculum that was last updated in the 80s that was medically inaccurate and didn't even mention consent, that I realized that it was built to disadvantage students like me, right? That didn't have parents to fill in those gaps at home. So I started getting active. I showed up to school board meetings, shared my story, encouraged my friends to do the same, and I never looked back to understand the way that abortion intersects with all of these other issues, we have to understand what reproductive justice even means. Reproductive justice is a framework that was created by Black women, and it is to describe so much more than just choice, right? So much more than just abortion access. It's about being able to decide if and when to have a family and being able to raise them in communities that are free from police brutality, from climate disaster, from family separation. So it's this really holistic view um, of what it means to achieve bodily autonomy. And what I'm thinking about is that there will always be people who will be able to skirt around restrictions, right? With the privilege and the means to receive that coverage. But there are low income people, particularly brown, black, indigenous people who will be left out. And those are the people who are the most affected by these regulations. What I think we really need in this moment is hope. And we deserve to celebrate the anniversary of Roe v. Wade. The 49th anniversary was on the 22nd. I went to the steps of the Supreme Court alongside other joyful protesters to celebrate the people who fought before me for me and to uplift the people who have abortions and those who provide them. And so one, we need hope. Celebrate where you can. Two, take action where you can, whether that's donating to abortion funds, supporting indie clinics, sharing information about the abortion pill, or calling your representatives to ask them to pass the Women's Health Protection Act. All of these are steps we can take in this moment. You have so much power in your personal story and whether you start at a local level, going to your school board, right, and fighting for sex education reform or to your senator pushing about birth control access, you can find so much to be changed just in your own personal story. When I think about this cultural moment, the way that rights are under attack, whether they be democratic rights, voting rights, abortion rights. I think it shows us that they're scared, that establishment politicians, white men, have held onto a power for a really long time, and that they see us coming and they're nervous, and they're doing everything they can to stop us, but that it is because of people like me and you um, that they don't stand a damn chance. We keep organizing, young people keep showing up, we are the future. And we're not just the leaders of tomorrow, we are leading today. This is a reminder that when our representatives, when our government um, doesn't show up for us, we show up for us. And I think that that is, that is gonna be the future of, of reproductive rights in this country post Roe.